Hi guys, I'm here with my good friend Cole. Hello everyone. <laughs> Tell everybody what you do and where you're from. The Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe from South Dakota. I've been living in Kansas since 2015 and I'm an actor. Yeah, you might know him from the show 1923. So my dear friend Cole, he is an actor. He goes to school at Haskell Indian Nations University here in Lawrence, Kansas. and. I met him and we have a lot of the same passions about our people, about this school, and I want to make sure we have space and create more conversations where we talk more about what we can do and what we are doing right now as a people and as students at this beautiful school where a lot of the good things are here but a lot of things need to change in order for us to really excel the way we need to and honor our ancestors the way we need to because if you did not know, Haskell used to be a boarding school as well. and. Every time I come on campus, I always make sure I honor all energies present here and do the most I can, which is also creating content for y'all. Um, so I kind of want to talk about the conversation we had in the library. Mm -hmm. I loved how you're talking about like, even though you come from like a more traditional background than other people and you grew up with your culture and you have long hair and everything, like you were not more native than anybody else that is Native American. And I really love that because the youth needs to hear that especially because especially with things like TikTok, mm -hmm. we are told that if you don't look a certain way, if you don't come from a certain culture or background, like you are not a native. And especially people that, you know, don't live on the rest, they don't have a certain upbringing. And so people feel the need to exclude <laughs> a lot of the time. Right. Um, so like what's some advice that you'd have for somebody whether it's you know growing up or just reconnecting with their culture, such as me, um, to embrace all of it, you know, not feel such separation between us. Us as tribal nations, yeah. Um, there's a lot of complex issues going in with identity, mm -hmm. of course. And for me to say that, uh, to say that, you know, with me having long hair, of course, you know, what's fortunate enough for my for my father, my ate, Joseph Brings Plenty Senior, to uh, get back and to revitalize and to wonder because it, it all first started with him wondering who we are mm -hmm. and because of that he was able to find some find some ceremonial circles really and that way and he started taking part into uh participating in ceremonies and started taking us along with these ceremonies wow. so he was like the leader of y'all like rediscovering mm -hmm. y'all's culture exactly Amazing. and he, he did a lot of digging on our ancestry as well wow. which just unraveled a bunch of uh, stuff we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. um, going to my grandma's lineage, going to my grandpa's lineage, my my mom and my dad. Uh, anyways, I suggest that um, getting to find certain individuals that are partaking in revitalization mm -hmm. and to ask them and, to, and, to, and mm -hmm. come to a place to really like, want to learn, mm -hmm. you know, what, what tribe you come from, of course. Mm -hmm. Because with the normative American culture, mm -hmm. when they view us, they think that we're homogenous, that we're all one tribe in a way. Yeah. But that's <laughs> that's far. A lot of different histories within each. Right. Yeah. Even because the thing about it is that even within a tribe, there's a lot of heterogeneity, mm -hmm. and uh, what that means is that you know a lot of other people. We partake in ceremonies that are similar, of course, you know, but that's in accordance with the land of itself. Yes. But that the people that conduct ceremonies that are able to do that, that have gone through ceremonies throughout years and are able to conduct them, um, they'll have their own dreams. So they'll conduct them a little differently. Exactly. And that's according to uh, the dream they had and, uh, and, uh, and a connection they have with the relatives. Absolutely. So. That's amazing. And one advice I'll give y'all, because obviously I'm Afro-Indigenous, I am a Skogi and Cherokee. And one advice I'll give y'all, especially for confidence, <laughs> if someone ever tells you that, you know, you aren't Native enough, you don't look the part or don't come from a certain area, I will let you know that your heart plays a bigger part than anything else. And a lot of people, you know, kind of ask me, well, what about, um, a European person or a Caucasian person with 2%, you know, African blood in them and them wanting to, you know, wear cornrows and big hoops and say certain things. My thing is that I'm not 
um, appropriating this culture because you see me actively trying and, and putting my heart into this. And I, I am very patient with all the people that give me any information and I'm just so grateful. So make sure your heart's in it. You come from the right place, not trying to fit into any type of a, a trend <laughs> to like wear the regalia and, and you know have feathers in your house just to look cute. Make sure your heart's in it because your ancestors will know that as well. So that's my advice for y'all. Um, what do you think, because I know Haskell has so many different tribes here, what do you think is the importance of coming to Haskell, um, pondering if they should go to Haskell for just the fact of, you know, all that's here for people that are reconnecting or people that, you know, live in certain areas where there's not many natives? Like pondering, like coming to Haskell? Mm -hmm. Just like um, applying here or uh, enrolling here. Mm, you know, for Haskell, Haskell has a lot of potential. It's uh, a lot of potential. Basically, like an intertribal hub, and what I want to do is to expand on that and mm -hmm. to make sure we'll, we'll um, create certain programs, and especially with cultural revi uh, revitalization, uh, would be a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Because there are students that have run into, you know, like yourself, that are finding out more information about their tribe or discovering uh, discovering to, to aspire that they want to get to know their tribe more because they start to see people like me, mm -hmm. you know. Rather it is negatively or positively yeah. because the negative aspect of it, what I was talking about earlier was, you know, having long hair and everything and me appearing, appearing very native. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that image has been perpetuated by <laughs> Hollywood in the past. Absolutely. Got to say thanks to Clint Eastwood and... John Wayne's legacy of perpetuating a stereotype mm -hmm. which only represented the northern plains mm. mostly and a little bit of the little bit of Apache probably but you know they they're just playing an idea of what an Indian is mm -hmm. so do you, know, you feel it? like Haskell is a great place to reconnect with this culture or just even learn more about you know native culture as a whole um, a great place for someone to start if they're right. looking for higher education. Right. If they're looking for higher education, yes. Um, I mean, yeah, because in terms of culture, it's it's uh, kind of hard to really put into words because there's so many different tribes. Yeah. You know, over over 500 tribes. But isn't that a good nations. thing though? Because you get to learn from so many different people from different areas and different tribes and cultural. Very true. Yeah. Um, people come from all different places mm -hmm. into, into here at Haskell and a lot of tribes are represented through those individuals that are going to school here. And uh, I mean, yeah, intertribal hub. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, but with culture. Because hmm. we have our powwows. Right, we got our powwows. We have some hand game you know, tournaments. Mm -hmm. It's not everything, but, you know, at least those are stepping stones for people, too, if they never experienced it. Because I even learned how to bead two days ago. I was like, whoa, I, you know, I would have never known unless I was here at high school mm -hmm. at the time I was. Um, but you just feel like there's a lot more areas to expand. Exactly. Okay. Expand on what we already have. Yeah. And that way we can create... Uh, mm -hmm. That builds relationships and yeah. that builds uh, connections. Do you feel, because remember, um, I think, because high school used to, so it went from a boarding school into a um, trade school, mm -hmm. like where people were learning, you know, different skills. Like, right. I know the women had the sewing and other things, and then the men had like a... It was uh, stone masonry. Yeah. Yep. And like cooking as well, and it also had some like, because I saw that yearbook, it had like some um, native classes about you know what we used to do before any colonization right so that's yeah but i feel like yeah to see and recognize where we are right now but also to know that there is a lot of room to expand and to make sure that we step into that and not get complacent with where we are now exactly yeah i think one big factor played into um how we view indians and stuff <laughs> Yeah. Fail. <laughs> well, that was a good one. It was, um, it was through the boarding school era, of course. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because uh, trying to assimilate people is uh, starting from childhood was uh, was a big move. Mm -hmm. Always go for the, that's terrible, but right. if you want to really affect the people, you go for the youth. Exactly. Go for the kids. That really did add into the life expectancy that we see today, because it's still pretty prevalent. I mean, heck, I was personally affected by by uh, somebody I used to go to school with who just passed away recently and um, succumbed to his alcoholism. But like, uh, my dad was telling me about the funeral and he was like looking around and he saw, he saw all of his friends and relatives and they, they look like, their bodies look like they're not holding up well. Mm -hmm. And possibly they might be getting put in the dirt soon Goodness. because of it. Goodness. And that's, you know, it's mm -hmm. my hometown, Eagle Butte. But um, that right there is the, the proof of what uh, the boarding schools have done to us, historically and to today. Yeah, I was talking to somebody here today and he was just explaining to me and just reinforming me that there used to be over like 200 million indigenous people <laughs> in this country before it was a country. Mm -hmm. And um, now like there's like, we don't even make up like 10 or 1% of the US population. And he says, through that, we are still grateful to be here. We're so grateful to be alive. And I'm just thinking about that because like I said, I only knew I was black <laughs> my entire life. So rediscovering this culture, I um, am learning a lot because at least you will see black millionaires. At least you will see black people on the news. It, that's terrible to say, but a lot of indigenous people don't even make the news, which shows a lot, which it, it, uh, it's a lot. So. It just shows how much perseverance we have within our people. And it also, yeah. It, it also, sorry to cut no, you, cut no. you off. Um, that's also the consequence of the othering that Hollywood has done. Along with, um, you know, if you get into mascots, of course. But <sighs> that's a consequence of othering. Yeah. And because of that, the consequences is that we've been kept in the past. So that, that way, when we look at issues that we face today in modern times, it's still going on because mm -hmm. people, people don't think that, you know, mm -hmm. we're in with the times mm -hmm. and that we have our own modern issues going on on a reservation and off the reservation. Mm -hmm. So that's why you don't see a lot of stuff get broadcast, you know, especially the one of the biggest issues you're facing right there right now is the epidemic of uh, MMIW, MMIP, uh, missing and murdered indigenous women and persons. And, uh, and also if you look at some of the tribal affairs stuff going on too. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so that passionate anger comes in. Yeah, it's, it's pretty frustrating, honestly. Yeah. You know, we're always put in the back burner because yeah. we're associated with the Wild West, which yeah. is uh, the past. Wow. Because um, you don't really see much about, I mean, it's slowly coming up. Like, I am starting to see more indigenous, like, content creators on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Starting to see more indigenous models, you know, actually, like, walk, like, high-end runways. Right. Um, but you're right. I feel like we have been put in the past, which is why. So when I talk to people, tell them I go here. The first question they ask me is, oh, how native are you to be able to go to this school? And I tell them, like, it's not it's not polite to ask, but also enough to <laughs> be native <laughs> and go to the school. And third thing they always ask me is like, oh, yeah. And like some like stereotypical question about natives. Like, oh, do they have a whole bunch of long hair? Are they doing this? And what do y'all go to class about? And what's like, and so it does show how much, you know, our people's image has been set so far back and has not been updated at all because they don't want to show us on the front page because we will dominate. <laughs> True, like, come on, the spirit's heavy. The spirit is heavy, powerful. <laughs> um, so I have a quick question. My question is, where do you think like the inner tribal discrimination comes from like here at high school like how some tribes discriminate against each other because you know they might have been off the res on the res i have this history you know i think that i know about this so we're better than you or we might have had some type of complications like where do you feel like that plays a part and where does that come from too because i feel like we weren't born with that you know we're all one people and 
the slower we're, we're getting like this, the more we get to come together. So, mm. yeah, that's not that's learned for sure. That's a very complex issue yeah. because, like I've said before, I mean, yeah, we're all from different tribal nations, of course, mm -hmm. but also there's some history into uh, the conflicts and clashes we have and tension we have towards different nations. The U.S. government used certain tactics to uh, mm -hmm. to further put pressure on the tension between separate tribes, of course. <laughs> My tribe's like one of the last ones that resisted against the U.S. The US government. Issues like that are pretty complex, you know. You're looking at the place they grew up. You're looking at the history that is that is taught and what the history that is not. And uh, and the history that's not is pretty loud. Mm. You can see that with a lot of individual interactions, mm -hmm. especially that I had too, like that you also brought up when people talk to you about mm -hmm. what do you guys learn about what do you guys Yeah. What does Haskell teach? Hey you guys still live in teepees? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, he said that to me. Ooh. I didn't know exactly if he was being genuine or Ooh. or just kind of being sarcastic because at the time I didn't know what sarcasm was because I grew up in the res. <laughs> Gave him a pretty uh, pretty good answer and I was yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, because a teepee in Lakota is like a dwelling or you can say home too. And I said, oh yeah, we, I got a nice flat screen TV, some AC during a, during a summer heat during the winter and he's mm -hmm. like looking at me like what oh, man. Yikes. <laughs> i was like yeah man we live in houses and he's like oh oh shit my bad man yeah like, that, that does show how much the media doesn't show us now you know yeah well um, we're slowly getting there yeah absolutely but you know on that high level is how much they did show us and what they truly like program people's minds to think of us as compared to now where they just left it blank or just kind of little small hints that no one really cares to look into it does show a lot of how people think that you know natives mm -hmm. won't live like they used to or they are like how they portray us to be and weren't teepees just like a uh, traveling <laughs> yeah. like yeah. we didn't live in teepees you know yeah my yeah my tribe specifically that's yeah. just our camping gear because yeah. we were originally mountain people but we had to avoid disease <laughs> straight from the point what was it again? uh basically like where do you think inner tribal discrimination comes from mm, oh yeah yeah and we started getting into the yeah what the actual history mm -hmm. i like it all Keep so, about it. Yeah.